I sincerely welcome all of you to Sri Radha Gopinath's home. Tonight is New Year's Eve. And every society has their own way of celebrating it. But as Kali Yuga progresses, it seems like all the different <laughs> ways are becoming one. <laughs> like Krishna says in Gita, what is day for a enlightened soul is the time of sleeping for ordinary materialistic people. And what is the time of sleeping for enlightened people? is the time to be awake for the conditions. So at midnight, some of you will be awake and some of you will be asleep. <laughs> but the real import of this verse is not on the physical platform of having our eyes open or closed. It is what we are attentive to, what we are valuing. A devotee values those things that bring them closer to Krishna and see no value to those things that separate us from Krishna. As far as material wealth, that has the potential of bringing us closer or farther depending on how we choose to use it. But unethical behavior, participating in the killing of animals, intoxication, illicit sex, whimsical gambling, these things, by nature, cannot really be dovetailed in a positive spiritual way. They are serious distractions from our connection to Krishna. So our great Acharyas, they have given us what we should be very much careful to avoid, and what is very necessary to develop that deepest connection of devotion to Krishna. There are 64 items of devotional service. Of those, five are very primary. worshiping the deity, reading and speaking from Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing and chanting Srimad Bhagavatam, going to holy places and worshiping Tulsi, associating with devotees and chanting the holy names. There are nine processes of devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told that of all these processes, foundational is the chanting of the holy names. And association of devotees. 
in that association for hearing Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, we're chanting the holy names. It gives us great spiritual protection. It awakens Krishna's grace within us. And then we can have the strength to actually avoid those things that are unfavorable for our devotionals. But in the world today, unless we have extremely saintly parents who have really protected us and nourished us, most of us have many bad habits. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> but uh, I ask you if, if you are included. We have so many bad habits. Some are gross bad habits, like just very selfish physical material activities or sinful activities. We mentioned a few. And others, in certain ways, are just as bad or possibly even worse, like having a fault-finding tendency, having a need to criticize others, having a need to show that I am better than everyone, having a certain type of laziness for my sadhana. having a burning, a, a burning habit for various types of very distracting entertainment. These are distractions. And a new year, it could be a great impetus for devotional service. Because like everything in this world, it's potentially material or spiritual, depending on how we perceive it. For some, New Year's is the time to completely become intoxicated and enjoy the celebration that it's a New Year. It's quite meaningless. For others, it's a time of reflection. Some business people, they really, they, they analyze their accounts and their strengths and their weaknesses of their business and their strengths and their weaknesses of their, their profits and losses, and they learn their lessons. And with, with a new, revived understanding, they proceed their business into the new year with deeper wisdom because they've analyzed the past They've learned from the past, and now they're passing across the threshold of the new year with more wisdom and more practical experience. Yes. On a spiritual level, it's like a rebirth. We can take it that way. where we can, in certain ways, look back not only at the past year, but our whole life. And what have been the impediments to our spiritual growth? What have been the habits that have been dragging us down and away from Krishna? And what are the new habits that actually I could commit myself to? In many places, there is what is called New Year's resolutions. That means we see the problems of the past in our own condition or in our collective condition. 
And we make resolutions, we make commitments. It's kind of like initiation. Not exactly, but if we take it seriously, it can have that effect. That yes, I'm, I've learned a lot. I'm, I'm one year closer to death. I have one more year of experience and realization and wisdom behind me, and I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to cross the threshold of this year. I'm going to cross that line as a much better person and a much better devotee. Because sometimes we need certain lines or certain demarcations or certain opportunities to actually say, yes, now is the time. I've been talking about it. I've been thinking about it. I've been praying for it, but I just haven't really done it. But now is the time. Yes. We do that at initiation. But some of us get all kinds of habits after initiation. You had that experience? <laughs> things, things that I really have to move beyond. So New Year's is a wonderful, wonderful time where, yes, you know, the, the sun is going into another, you know, the sun is moving in a certain direction and it's a new year. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to make my commitments. I'm going to move forward. And if we, if we celebrate New Year in this way with Krishna in the center, then actually it becomes, in spirit, like a Vaishnav holiday. It becomes, holiday means holy day. <laughs> and by by committing ourselves to Krishna, to devotion to Krishna, things that I've just been lazy about, lazy about accepting, or lazy about rejecting, yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm really going to give it a try. And an event like that can transform our lives. <clears throat>